Have you ever looked at the Middle East and thought, how on earth could this place ever turn green? This is a region where summer temperatures push beyond 50 degrees Celsius, where 83% of people live under extreme water stress and where nearly half of the land is already degraded. Yet today, governments are announcing plans so bold they sound like they came straight out of a movie. The Middle East has always lived with scarcity, scarcity of water, fertile soil, and vegetation. For millennia, civilizations survived here only by hugging rivers like the Nile, the Tigris, and the Euphrates, or by carefully maintaining oases. But today, those age-old survival systems are breaking down under the pressure of modern population growth and climate change. According to the World Bank, the Middle East and North Africa is the most water-scarce region in the world, home to 6% of the global population, but less than 2% of renewable freshwater supplies. On average, every person in the region has access to just 1,000 cubic meters of water per year, compared to a global average of around 7,000. In places like Jordan, it's closer to 100 cubic meters, 10 times below the threshold the UN considers absolute scarcity. At the same time, the region's population is booming. Egypt adds 2 million people every single year. Riyadh, Saudi Arabia's capital, is expected to double in size by 2030. And in wealthy Gulf states, sprawling urban growth means more demand for food, water, and cooling. Add climate change on top of that, and the problem becomes urgent. The Middle East is warming twice as fast as the global average, with projections showing average temperatures could rise by 5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Dust storms are increasing in frequency and intensity, while rainfall is becoming rarer and less predictable. By 2050, some reports warn that parts of the region could become literally uninhabitable for humans during extreme heat waves. So greening the desert is not just about planting pretty landscapes, it's about survival. On the surface, these sound impossible, but they're happening right now. So how exactly are Middle Eastern countries planning to pull this off, and is any of it actually realistic? Let's start with the biggest headline. Saudi Arabia's pledge to plant 10 billion trees. The plan was launched in 2021 under the Saudi Green Initiative, part of the country's Vision 2030 strategy. To give you a sense of scale, 10 billion trees would cover around 74 million hectares of land. That's larger than the entire country of Chile. Saudi officials say the project will do a few things at once, reduce dust storms, trap carbon emissions, create new jobs, and make cities like Riyadh a few degrees cooler. The plan also involves turning 30% of Saudi land into protected areas, creating a buffer against desertification. By 2030, Riyadh alone aims to plant 7.5 million trees, transforming one of the world's most sprawling concrete cities into an urban forest. Now, 10 billion is such a massive number that it's hard to picture. To meet that goal by 2030, the country would need to plant over a million trees every single day. And these aren't just random trees. Saudi scientists are focusing on hardy native species that can handle blistering heat and salty soil. Progress has already started. Since the initiative launched, millions of trees and shrubs have been planted in parks, cities, and degraded lands. Drones are being used to scatter seed balls over vast areas, and volunteers are joining national campaigns to plant by hand. But the plan isn't just about greening the desert. Saudi Arabia is the world's biggest oil exporter, and the Green Initiative is part of its attempt to shift its global image. Whether it's about the environment, politics, or both, planting 10 billion trees is a statement. The real question is, can the desert actually support this many trees? We'll come back to that when we talk about challenges. But for now, this is one of the boldest environmental pledges ever made in the region. If Saudi Arabia's green initiative sounds massive, wait until you hear what's happening inside its futuristic megacity project, NEOM. NEOM is a $500 billion smart city being built in the country's northwest, marketed as a hub for innovation, renewable energy, and advanced living. But beyond the glass towers and AI, the developers have set another ambitious goal, re-greening the desert around it. 
The NEOM Regreening Initiative aims to plant 100 million native trees, shrubs, and grasses by 2030. That's enough vegetation to cover roughly 1.5 million hectares of dry land. The idea is not just to make NEOM look green from space, but to rebuild lost ecosystems, stabilize soils, and reduce desertification in the surrounding area. Unlike older tree planting drives that focused on importing species, NEOM is working with scientists to prioritize local drought-resistant plants. They've partnered with Saudi Arabia's National Center for Vegetation Cover and are testing new technologies to water seedlings efficiently and monitor their survival rates. Think about the contrast here. On one hand, you have futuristic urban design with things like The Line, a 170-kilometer linear city. On the other, you have desert regreening at a scale of tens of millions of plants. It's an unusual pairing, but the message is clear. Saudi Arabia doesn't just want NEOM to be livable, it wants it to be green. Whether it works or not, the ambition is enormous. For a country that is often pictured as endless dunes, the image of a megacity surrounded by restored greenery is almost as radical as the city itself. Saudi Arabia is not keeping these ideas to itself. In 2021, it launched the Middle East Green Initiative, a regional plan that makes even the 10 billion tree pledge look tiny. The goal here is 50 billion trees across the Middle East, with 10 billion inside Saudi Arabia and another 40 billion spread out across neighboring countries. To put that into perspective, that's an area of 200 million hectares, roughly the size of two Frances, covered in trees. If it works, this initiative alone could remove about 2.5% of global carbon emissions from the atmosphere, an enormous figure for just one region. Countries like Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, and Morocco have all signed on. And to back it up, the initiative includes practical steps, building a regional knowledge center to share data, setting up programs for cloud seeding to increase rainfall, and creating early warning systems for dust and sandstorms. The scale is so big it almost sounds unrealistic, but this is where the Middle East is trying to turn a shared crisis into a shared project. The thinking is simple. Desertification doesn't stop at a border, so the fight against it can't either. While Saudi Arabia is turning its focus inland, the United Arab Emirates is looking to its coastlines. The UAE has committed to planting 100 million mangroves by 2030, a very different approach, but one with equally big benefits. Mangroves might not look like much compared to giant forests, but in climate science, they're considered super plants. A single hectare of mangroves can capture four times more carbon than the same area of tropical rainforest. They also act as natural seawalls, protecting coastal cities from erosion and storm surges. The UAE is already making visible progress. By 2025, it had planted around 30 million mangroves, with some of the work done using drone fleets. These drones drop seed pods in precise patterns, covering areas that would take weeks for humans to plant. The country also uses advanced techniques like tissue culture propagation, where mangrove seedlings are cloned in labs and then transferred to nurseries before being planted in tidal zones. And the UAE is not keeping this effort local. It launched the Mangrove Alliance for Climate alongside Indonesia, India, and other nations, aiming to spread mangrove protection globally. This move was highlighted during COP28 in Dubai, where mangroves were branded as one of the most scalable nature-based climate solutions. Mangroves are more than climate infrastructure. They provide habitats for crabs, fish, and migratory birds, restoring ecosystems that once thrived along the Arabian Gulf. In places like Jubail Mangrove Park near Abu Dhabi, residents can now walk along raised boardwalks through lush green canopies that didn't exist just a generation ago. The UAE's plan shows how greening doesn't always mean covering deserts with trees. Sometimes it's about protecting and expanding the ecosystems that nature already wants to grow, if given the chance. Egypt faces a unique problem. More than 95% of its population lives along the Nile, leaving almost all of the vast desert empty. But as the population surges past 110 million, the Nile Valley can't keep up with food demand. So Egypt has set out to create farmland where there was none before. 
The government's flagship plan is called the Future of Egypt Project, part of the broader New Delta Initiative. The idea? Turn around 9,240 square kilometers of desert, an area about the size of Cyprus, into productive farmland. To make that happen, engineers are building a massive 114-kilometer canal to carry Nile water into the western desert. The canal, costing around $5 billion, is designed to deliver 3.5 billion cubic meters of water a year. With that water, Egypt hopes to grow wheat, corn, and vegetables on once barren sand. The project is already visible from satellites. If you zoom in on Google Earth, you'll see perfect circles of green sprouting in the middle of the desert, a sign of pivot irrigation systems at work. It looks like giant crop circles, except they're feeding a nation. But this plan is not without controversy. Egypt is already facing a water deficit, and with Ethiopia filling its Grand Renaissance Dam upstream, Nile water is even more contested. Some argue that expanding agriculture into the desert could strain water supplies even further. Still, for Egyptian leaders, this project is not optional. With a growing population and limited farmland, creating new breadbaskets is seen as a necessity for survival. It's one of the boldest attempts to turn desert into farmland anywhere in the world. Not every plan to green the Middle East involves planting trees or digging canals. Some ideas sound more like something out of science fiction. One of the most talked about proposals came from Abdullah al Shehi, an Emirati entrepreneur. His idea? Tow icebergs from Antarctica to the Gulf. It sounds insane, but here's the logic. A single large iceberg can hold around 20 billion gallons of fresh water, enough to supply a million people for five years. If dragged to the UAE, the melting ice could provide irrigation for desert agriculture and drinking water for coastal cities. There are also proposals to build massive undersea freshwater pipelines, such as one stretching hundreds of kilometers from Pakistan to the UAE. In theory, it could deliver billions of liters of water directly to the desert. Of course, these ideas face massive challenges. Towing an iceberg thousands of kilometers risks losing much of it to melting. The cost could run into billions of dollars, and the environmental impact is unclear. Undersea pipelines also face engineering hurdles and geopolitical risks, but the fact that these ideas are even being seriously discussed shows the scale of the water crisis in the Middle East. When your region is one of the driest on Earth, even the most far-fetched ideas start to sound worth exploring. Now, planting trees and digging canals are only part of the story. To make these greening projects survive, the Middle East is leaning heavily on science and technology. One approach is cloud seeding. Planes release fine particles, like silver iodide, into clouds to encourage rainfall. Think of it as giving clouds a little push to let go of their water. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have already been running cloud seeding programs for years, and under the Middle East Green Initiative, regional cooperation is expanding. The hope is that even a modest increase in rainfall could make a difference for crops and new forests. Then there's the role of drones and artificial intelligence. Saudi Aramco, for instance, has launched a project to plant one million trees with drones. These drones scatter seed pods across huge stretches of land, each pod designed to hold moisture long enough to give the seed a fighting chance. Satellites track where trees survive, while AI helps decide the best planting locations. All of this shows a pattern. The Middle East is not just trying to green desserts by brute force, it's also experimenting with ways to stretch every drop of water and monitor every planted tree. Without these technologies, the massive tree planting campaigns wouldn't stand a chance. Of course, with every bold vision comes big skepticism. There are several challenges that could make greening the Middle East far more complicated than it looks on glossy presentations. Planting billions of trees requires billions of liters of water every year. Egypt, for instance, already has a 7 billion cubic meter annual deficit. Expanding farmland in the desert could mean sacrificing water needed for cities and existing farms. It's a trade-off that is not always acknowledged. Planting a tree is one thing, keeping it alive is another. Studies show that in desert restoration projects, up to 70% of saplings can die if they aren't properly watered in the first few years. Without long-term maintenance, Billions of planted trees could simply vanish into sand. Even if trees are planted and watered, the region is heating up faster than almost anywhere else. 
By 2050, average temperatures in parts of the Gulf could rise by 4 to 5 degrees Celsius, with more frequent heat waves above 55 degrees Celsius. Some scientists warn that no amount of irrigation will save certain types of vegetation in those conditions. The price tag of these projects is staggering. Egypt's new Delta project is costing around $5 billion just for the canal and pumps. Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030, which funds many of its greening initiatives, is worth hundreds of billions of dollars. So is greening the desert the best use of money, or would investment in water conservation, renewable energy, and reducing emissions have a bigger impact? The truth likely lies somewhere in between. Yes, the challenges are huge, and yes, politics is involved. But even partial success would still make a meaningful difference for local communities and the climate. So here we are. The Middle East, one of the harshest environments on Earth, is now the stage for some of the boldest environmental projects ever attempted. The challenges are enormous, water shortages, soaring costs, climate risks, and questions of whether these projects are more about politics than practicality. But whether or not they all succeed, the fact that they're happening at all signals something important. So what do you think? Can deserts really be turned into forests and farmland, or are these plans simply too ambitious for the climate they're up against? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.